I'm Lowell Gentry. I'm a research agronomist. I'm looking to improve nutrient uptake and minimize nutrient loss while maintaining profitability and reducing tile nitrate loss. In this video I'm going to talk about a diverse crop rotation. It's a three-year rotation where we grow corn, soybean, winter wheat, and double crop soybean. And we're also adding cereal rye after corn ahead of soybean. Adding winter wheat to corn and soybean can greatly reduce soil erosion and there's mounting evidence that diversity of crop residues and inputs of carbon can improve soil health. Our research is conducted on a working farm here in Pyatt County where the soil organic levels are about 4%. It's a very productive site but even at this productive site with the corn and soybean rotation, we see declining organic carbon. And this is something we want to reverse. Uh, over the past nine years of this research, corn, soybean, and winter wheat yields have been 240, 80, and 100 bushels per acre. With double crop soybean being more variable, but still yielding 40 bushel per acre. The University of Illinois researchers have been monitoring tile nitrate on this farm since the beginning of our study in 2015. Adding winter wheat to corn and soybean rotations will reduce soil erosion, but winter wheat occupies the space that a cover crop would have, and therefore it's able to immediately absorb any mineralization that follows the soybean crop. It's a reference to the old soybean end credit. Even though we don't use that term anymore, the nitrogen that became available due to that rotation effect is more readily absorbed by a plant like wheat that follows immediately after the harvest of soybean. Another benefit of adding winter wheat to a corn and soybean rotation is that pest cycles may be broken. And either corn or soybean can be benefited, uh, meaning higher yield in a more diverse rotation than what we might find in conventional corn and soybean. Adding cereal rye to this diverse rotation, coming in after corn ahead of soybean, uh, covers up the soil 30 months out of 36 by having corn, soybean, wheat, double crop soybean, and the cereal rye. We have 30 out of 36 months covered up, where in a conventional corn and soybean rotation without cover crops, we would only be covered up 10 months out of 24. Adding cereal rye into this rotation will again decrease soil erosion, but also uh, cereal rye does a fine job of suppressing weeds. And also cereal rye is a very good nitrogen catch crop, and we have lots of evidence that cereal rye can reduce tile nitrate loads. When we add wheat to the corn and soybean rotation, we see that wheat is very efficient at utilizing nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, wheat reduces the tile nitrate concentration, but wheat also shuts the tile off uh, about 30 days earlier on average than corn and soybean, which also reduces the tile load. Adding cereal rye after corn in the three-year rotation has been very effective. We've seen uh, results of greater than 80 percent reduction in tile nitrate when comparing to conventionally grown corn and soybean uh, on an adjacent field, same soil type, same weather. We have found that uh, if we grow at least a half a ton of above ground biomass per acre of cereal rye, we can significantly reduce tile nitrate. But we've grown as much as two and a half tons of above ground biomass per acre when we planted soybean green into standing cereal rye. And that is very effective at reducing tile nitrate, but we worry that if we get above two and a half tons per acre, we may be impacting uh, soybean yield. So I wouldn't go any higher than that. On this graph, we're showing the annual flow weighted mean nitrate concentration from both the corn soybean wheat field, as well as an average across both phases of the corn and soybean uh, fields that are conventionally managed. So we see a reduction over the nine years 
of about 50% when it comes to tile nitrate loads. The, the diverse rotation reduces tile nitrate by 50% compared to conventionally managed corn and soybean. The average flow-weighted mean nitrate concentration coming out of conventionally managed corn and soybean is 8.1 part per million, whereas the flow-weighted mean nitrate concentration coming out of the corn and soybean wheat rotation averaged only 4.1 part per million. That's a reduction of 50 percent. We maintained yield, we maintained profitability with the diverse rotation, yet we reduced tile nitrate by 50 percent. On that same graph, you can see though in 2021, the diverse rotation had a very high flow-weighted mean nitrate concentration. And we have figured out what has happened there. It, it just so happens that the year before that high tile nitrate, the double crop soybean was caught with a very early killing frost, about mid-October. And after that soybean crop was killed prematurely, when it was in mid-grain fill with, with a high percent N in the leaves, we then found much higher tile nitrate. So that nitrogen somehow leaked out of the soybean and got into the soil, but also got into the tile. Interestingly enough, though, the subsequent corn crop was greatly benefited following that frosted soybean, which is not exactly what we expected. We were hoping that the diverse rotation would lead to higher corn and soybean yields, but it was actually because of the frosting of the double crop soybean. One thing we've noticed in the diverse rotation is the abundance of earthworms and earthworm holes called middens. Um, it's probably due to the fact that there's much less tillage in the diverse rotation. We strip till in front of corn, but it's no-till soybean, no-till winter wheat, no-till double crop soybean. Where on conventionally managed corn soybean, we do full width tillage in the fall and in the spring. So that has made a big difference on the amount of earthworms out there. In fact, we don't see any middens in the conventional uh, plots. So we're wondering what effect will that have over time on nutrient uh, retention and tile nitrate. But at this point, it doesn't seem to have any adverse effect uh, contributing to tile nitrate. We can also see a, a big difference in soil structure between conventionally managed soil and the diverse rotation after being in uh, this rotation for nine years. And when we go to the conventional plots and we look at it in the spring, it's just very crumbly. Uh, it, it, can, it can move around and it can blow. And so this is a, a side effect of conventionally managed crops that uh, we would rather avoid and we can clearly avoid it if we have less tillage and a more diverse rotation with cover crops.